On February 12, 2011, 10 students from the University of Florida ventured into Ellison's cave, but their adventure would quickly turn into a living nightmare when two of them got stuck into a pit. Together, they fought against the freezing temperatures and for their lives. This is the unfortunate story of the Ellison's cave tragedy. Michael Peary and Grant Lockenbach headed to Ellison's cave in North Georgia, but the two didn't make it out alive. Their friends never heard from them again. With the apparel that they were apparently wearing, which is not conducive for this weather, and in the ice cold water, uh, within a very short period of time, it appears they were overcome by hypothermia. On February 12, 2011, with winter nearly over but still delivering extreme cold temperatures, 10 students from the University of Florida, five boys and five girls, decided to go caving. The trip was organized by 20-year-old Grant Lockenbach, who was set to celebrate his birthday the following week. Grant, Michael, and some of the other students had previous caving experience, making this seem like just another adventure. Despite being in different university levels and departments, Michael and Grant were very close friends, bonded by their academic excellence and Christian faith, as well as their love for adventure. They shared a passion for activities ranging from rock climbing to skydiving, wake surfing, and cave exploring. Just weeks before the tragic accident, they had visited another cave and thoroughly enjoyed the experience. For their next trip on February 12th, they chose Ellison's Cave, an over 1,000 feet deep cave nestled in Walker County on Pigeon Mountain in Georgia. This cave is the 12th deepest in the United States and features the fantastic pit, the deepest unobstructed pit in the country, nearly twice the height of the Statue of Liberty. The students traveled over 400 miles from the university the previous day, reaching Georgia in the afternoon and booking a hotel near the wildlife management area where Pigeon Mountain is located. The next day, they eagerly prepared for their adventure, dressed in casual clothing and packing their caving gear, headlamps, helmets, and ropes into their vehicles. Unfortunately, they left their phones behind, taking only essential caving equipment, a decision they would later regret. As the group made their way up the mountain, they began to worry about the intensifying cold as the temperature continued to drop. Unfortunately, no one had considered the weather enough to bring thick clothing. Grant and Michael had dressed casually during their previous caving trips, so they likely assumed everything would be fine. Besides, they didn't plan to venture too far into the cave. After hiking for almost an hour, the students approached one of the cave entrances and were taken aback by what they found. The narrow opening, jagged around its edges, was so small that only one person could pass through at a time and with some effort. They couldn't see anything beyond the entrance except the beckoning darkness. One by one, they lowered themselves into the cave, soon confronting a daunting darkness gradually replaced by their headlights. As the cave's interior became fully visible, they were amazed by its beauty, but the biting cold remained a concern. In the summer, the water in the cave is around 56 degrees Fahrenheit, so one can imagine how freezing it would be in the winter. The group settled for a brief exploration of a small part of the cave before planning to head back out. No one was thinking of wading in the water or anything similar. However, something unexpected occurred. As they were wrapping up their exploration, one of the students' backpacks fell into a vertical pit known as the warm-up pit. Though not as deep as the fantastic pit, it was still a risky 125 feet. The temperatures in this pit were extremely cold due to a nearby waterfall that roared like a lion and chilled like Antarctica. It wasn't a place anyone should enter, especially dressed as these students were. However, the backpack contained essential materials the group needed, and they only planned a quick descent to retrieve it and then come back up. Being the leader, Grant volunteered to retrieve the bag. His friends urged him not to risk it and to leave the bag behind, sensing that something bad might happen. However, Grant insisted he would be fine. They tapped him on the back and wished him luck as he prepared to lower himself down the pit with a rope. Grant slowly rappelled down the abyss, shivering slightly as the cold intensified, but he hadn't reached the worst of it yet. As he descended further, the noise from a rushing waterfall grew louder, though he could still hear his friends talking and reassuring him. He'd gone halfway down, when something terrible happened. As he descended further, Grant came face to face with the wailing waterfall. Already shivering hard, he tried to avoid the freezing water, but in his attempt, the worst happened. First, he heard a loud jolting sound from his harness and rope. He had stopped moving. Panicking, he began jolting his rope and harness to get them to work again, but his efforts only caused the rope to wrap around him further. 
Then his worst fear came to pass. As he struggled to free himself, the icy water drenched him. By this time, he was screaming for help at the top of his lungs, but his shouts were muffled and drowned out by the roaring waterfall and his shivering mouth. Nevertheless, his friends heard him and shouted back. They looked at each other, confused and worried, but Michael didn't hesitate to strap on the same rope his friend had used. As he descended to save Grant, he cried out for him to hold on. He soon reached Grant, who had become slow and incoherent in both words and movement. Exhausted, Grant could only fumble with his hands. Michael shouted an update to the friends above, who were slightly relieved but couldn't predict what happened next. As Michael tried to free his friend, he too became entangled in the rope. Even worse, his body was also being soaked by the same icy water that was already freezing his friend to death. Realizing he couldn't move either up or down the rope, he began screaming for help. Upon hearing this, their friends above were thrown into a frenzy, but needed to act fast. Some stayed behind while others exited the cave. Those who remained communicated with the trapped students, offering words of encouragement and prayers, assuring them that help was on the way. The ones who made it out descended the mountain with all the strength they could muster. In less than 30 minutes, they reached the base, retrieved their phones from the car, and quickly contacted the authorities. By then, it was 2.19 p.m. Meanwhile, back in the cave, the voices of Michael and Grant grew fainter as the cold took its toll on them. Their friends above feared the worst, but continued to encourage them to resist while rescue efforts were underway. As time passed, the cold drained their energy, and their respiratory systems and hearts began to fail. After around 30 minutes of communication, their voices faded entirely. Their friends were devastated to see the rope dangling, unable to reach them. Eventually, the other friends returned with the county's cave rescue team. Part of the team provided treatment for hypothermia to the other students, while the rest descended into the pit. At 3.30 p.m., they found Michael and Grant hanging from the rope, but found no pulses. They were already too late. Their findings were communicated to those above, and the cave echoed with endless sobs. As the rescuers tried to console the grieving students, they faced the daunting task of freeing the boys from the entangled rope. Just like Michael's heroic efforts, the experienced rescuers struggled to pry their bodies loose. Their efforts lasted for six hours, finally completing around 10 p.m., when they were able to release the boys from the deadly hold and pull them up the pit. The sight of Michael and Grant broke their friends' hearts once again. It was a tough loss for their families and the University of Florida. Grant, a brilliant sociology student in his final year, was commemorated through the Grant Lockenbach Memorial Fund, providing scholarships through the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Michael's heroism earned him a Carnegie Medal from the Carnegie Hero Fund Commission. Additionally, the Department of Fine Arts established the Michael Pirie Memorial Scholarship Fund, awarded to students in the Gator Marching Band who exhibit strength of character, generosity, exuberance, and dedication.